But all this being said, I do not think you have what? eight functions. In other words, everything I just explained to you is not FJ. But we do though. <laughs> canon. Well, Frank, why did you just explain it to us then? Because you asked. And because I think it's worth being aware of because when you're out in the, the world of MBTI on the forums and stuff, You'll see people talk about these functions all the time, especially the polar. People are obsessed with the polar. Right. But why, Frank? Why do you not believe in the shadow functions? Because, in my opinion, there's no reason. There is. To. Everything can be explained by the first four functions. When you start to add in four more functions so that every type has every function and every function does something different, it starts to Kinda, get yeah. complicated to the point that it really starts to feel fake. <laughs> like if we ever really wanted to make it clear that we're just making stuff up, throw in uh, fourth function. Especially when the common wisdom is that, oh, your fourth function, this is the the weak spot. This is the one that is in opposition to the first one. But then we're like, oh no, it's actually It's this. actually both of them. So is it worth knowing generally what this is all about? Yeah. Is it worth studying to use for your own personal development? Yes it is. No. Okay, so um, in today's video, I'm talking about Frank James and his video on the shadow types of the 16 personalities. And in this video, he makes the argument that we don't need the eight function model. The four functions are enough. Now, I'd say that definitely he has a point. Um, definitely the eight function model can get overly complicated. Certainly if you look at John Beebe and if you look at uh, some newer versions of it, some people are going way too far in over explaining the eight function model and the eight functions for every person. However, I think that he is incorrect. I think that in general, if you do it correctly, the eight function model can be a healthy way to aid you in your personal development and in gaining an ever increasing amount of self-awareness and consciousness and flow. So in this video, let's talk about how you can use the eight function model in a healthy way. And if you're interested in these kind of topics, check out patreon.com slash ericdor, where I provide a document explaining the eight function model 2.0 and how you can approach the eight function model and use it in an applicable, practical way without the necessary confusions and complexity. Okay, so let's start with one thing. First of all, do we use four functions or do we use eight functions? I believe that we use all eight cognitive functions. Because obviously, if a person couldn't use extroverted sensing or introverted sensing, they'd be quite dysfunctional people. All of these represent our cognition and our thought processes. We have all of these processes inside ourselves, and we, can, and we have a different relationship to each one. Every personnel type has a unique relationship to each cognitive function. While you can use every cognitive function, you have one dominant function, you have one function that you prioritize above all others, you tend to have certain functions which help you put yourself in a certain mood or mental state. When you use certain functions, you generate flow and momentum. When you use other functions, you lose energy, you expend energy, and you gain and experience more discomfort. Therefore, it's important to think about and recognize how you use each function. Now, what are the mathematics that I found when I studied the eight function model? First of all, what I found was that we have two sets of flow functions, two sets of inspirational functions or growth functions, and two sets of comfortable functions or comforting functions, balance functions, you could call them. Finally, we have two sets of stress functions. Now, the flow functions are not necessarily always good and the stress functions are not necessarily always evil. One problem with the traditional eight function model is that it makes the assumption that certain functions are evil or malicious. By giving the eight functions names such as the demon or the trickster or the polar, you sometimes create the idea of these functions as dysfunctions. And what I believe is that every cognitive function serves an important role in us. And if we learn to respect and build a stronger relationship to each function, we become more healthy and balanced people. With only four functions, we're stuck in a set script, a limiting script, and we find ourselves often trapped in a cycle of moving between uh, setting goals, giving up, and trying to do something, and wanting and working towards something, but never feeling content and never feeling happy. So I want to show you how you can broaden your worldview and learn to build a stronger relationship to all eight of the current functions. Now, one thing I do to simplify the eight function model is I group the functions two by two. 
Here I group the first and the sixth function, the second and the fifth function, the third and the seventh function, and lastly I group uh, the, the third and the eighth function, and lastly the fourth and the seventh function. Why do I group these functions together? Well, first of all, because we tend to value and share similar preferences for these functions. By grouping the functions two by two, what you will recognize is that many of these uh, functions share similar overlaps. We experience them in similar ways. And INTJ will still experience introverted thinking as something positive, meaningful, energizing, and something comfortable. And INTP will also use and experience introverted intuition as similarly comforting and energizing. Now, the question is, why don't INTPs then use uh, introverted intuition to the same extent of an INTJ? And why don't INTJs use I introverted thinking to the same extent as an INTP? Well, it's because they are rational and irrational. The INTJ is an irrational type. Intuitive dominant types and sensory dominant types are irrational. That means they prefer to stay in an intuitive vacuum of openness and learning. They prefer to never complete their goals and to constantly expand and add on new information on top of their previous information. INTPs, on the other hand, are rational types. They want to have a reason for why they should learn something before they learn it. They want the world to operate according to a set of rules and they want to maintain and specify and keep to a certain set of rules and principles. INTPs can be open to new information and certainly can use their intuition and can value it, but only as long as it fills and fits with their introverted thinking and as long as their introverted thinking approves of it. Often I see the sixth function as the flow mediator or the flow balancer. I say the dominant function is like a flow function. It's like your dominant engine in life. It propels you forward towards your goals. It gives you energy. It makes you anticipate and excited about something. The more you use your dominant function, the more excitement and energy and confidence you experience. But the, there is a problem. The problem is, when is there ever a release? Is it just a new a gradual roller coaster? Are you just constantly pushing yourself upwards? Is it just a constant state of ever anticipation of something that never happens? For a rational type, it can easily be that you keep on expanding and adding new information to things without ever reaching a conclusion. You just like to speculate about things. And you never like to make up your mind. For the INTP, it can be that you stay in a state of certainty, holding to your, adhering to your existing principles, trying to live according to what you believe is correct and to what you think is efficient and what makes logical sense. But because you're never able to open up and because you're never able to use and dive into and open fully to your intuition or your sensation, you never experience any release. You feel stuck in a certain lifestyle and a certain way of life that may not be serving you and may not be helping you stay balanced. Being so decisive, being so rational can be your detriment. Because of these rules, I end up with eight specific roles. The first function, known as the dominant function, serves the role of flow buildup. It builds up energy. The second function, the auxiliary, can be said as a form of release of inspiration. It's the feeling of success and completion of finishing a goal or doing something difficult. The comfort function, the tertiary, serves as a release or sense of relief. It's letting go of expectations from your auxiliary and finding the way to relax and detach. The fourth function, the inferior, serves as the buildup of stress. It adds a level of challenge to your life. It makes things more difficult and challenging, but also can serve as and give you a sense of accomplishment. The more you're able to do difficult things and the more you're able to appropriately address stress, the greater the sense of accomplishment. The fifth function serves as the buildup of inspiration. It gives you energy at the expense of making you go outside of your comfort zone. You can only use the fifth if you're prepared to abandon your normal tendencies and to do something different or unusual for you. By doing so, you get new information and stimulation or new motivation or energy, perspectives that you wouldn't otherwise have considered. And this leads to a buildup of inspiration. The sixth function leads to release of flow. It means uh, taking the energy, the flow that you built up and learning to release it, to learning to find contentment in what you do, to learning to find acceptance and peace in who you are and in whatever it is that you are. 
The seven function serves as a stress release. It's something you do when you're really stressed. Um, it's something you do because you just want to be done with something. It can also serve as a, your form of judgment, your ability to uh, say, no, this is not good enough, and I don't like this about myself, and this is not right, and this is wrong, and I shouldn't have done that. The eight function serves as the buildup of comfort. It represents something you don't like to do, which takes energy to do, but something you know which will help you rest later. By using the eight function, you manage to address tasks and things that are outside your primary hobbies and interests, but it also builds and gives you a sense of comfort and gratification. You could call them different things. You could say that the dominant function is the hero, the secondary function, the auxiliary, is the main quest giver in your life. The tertiary is kind of a side quest, something you do, but it's just not necessarily going to make you happy or lead to any long-term stimulation, but which is easy and fun and provides you a sense of escape from the main quest. The fourth function, inferior, can be described as the rival, your primary obstacle. It's good to have a rival because it gives you something to work towards. If you stay in flow and never go into stress, You'll never achieve anything. You'll never experience a sense of accomplishment. The fifth function can be described as the muse. It's the inspiration that comes from learning to accept and cope with uncertainty or learning to do something different for yourself. Learning to put yourself in a situation where you're forced to encounter or accept different perspectives or viewpoints. The sixth function can be described as your inner child. That part of you that you let go of because you had to focus on work and uh, your goals and other more important things. Often it can feel like because we have a main quest or we have something important to work towards that we are never allowed to truly just appreciate ourselves for who we are. And the inner child provides us with a sense of carrot, the stimulation, a sense of reward. It makes us feel like we've done something good and it lets us and allows us to rest and to celebrate our accomplishments. Many people forget to do this and forget to use this function, but it's so important for balance. The seven function serves as your inner judge or critic. It tells you what you could do better, what you should have done differently, but it can also serve as a form of stress release. It can also tell you, oh, I'm just a bad person, so there's no point in doing anything. It can also be a sense of giving up or quitting on something. I'm not good enough anyway, so why should I do it? And it can also be a sense of letting go of something that's difficult for you. Learning to stop worrying about something. Why do I care about this? This doesn't matter. So that you can open the door later on for something else. Finally, the eight function serves as your inner parent or manager. Telling you, you should do the dishes, or you should do these or these tasks, or you should do these important things. I know you don't want to, but if you do it, you can rest after. Yes, each function has different roles, and the eight function model can help you understand all of these different things. So, uh, <laughs> What I've found is, if you stick to the four function model, you're limited to a certain set of explanations. The four functions can't explain every part of yourself and your thoughts and how you think and how you make decisions. The four functions can certainly give you useful explanations, but they can't really account for the full totality of who you are. Also, they present very limiting beliefs about the 16 personalities. If we're all stuck with four specific functions and we can't use any of the other ones, well, then we can't really connect with or understand other people in a sense of genuine and positive way. So here's my criticism of Frank James. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.